Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is okay so welcome to jams drupal camp i have a really exciting session uh, one that i particularly like today the idea of having a virtual drupal camp in the context of the aquia podcast came to me because i get the chance to see a lot of great sessions at various events around the world and Though a lot of them might get filmed, it's hard for us in the community to keep track of where they are and, and how to find them. And stuff that's caught my eye lately, I'm trying to just give it a bit more visibility so that we can all have these resources in a clear and obvious place. Today, I have Kathy Faze with me. She is a Drupal core contributor and specialized in mentoring around core contribution. And Kathy, you gave a really fantastic core conversation in at um, DrupalCon Prague. Now, your regular DrupalCon attendee might not even know so much about the core conversations as a format, as a track at DrupalCon. Can you tell us a little bit about what the core conversations are, what function they serve? Sure. So core conversations have been a lot of different formats over the years and they were and are again a pretty good one where most of the presentation time is only a few minutes of somebody explaining uh, a proposal or a problem and some ideas about it and then people from the audience get up to the audience mic and they have a discussion so it really is a core conversation and not a core presentation um, and you can talk about outrageous things, like things that are driving you crazy or this wild idea that you had. It doesn't have to be fully thought out. And uh, it's a really good place to just get everybody all together in one room and talk about things. Would it be fair to say that is where the future of Drupal um, gets set up? I think it's where the future of Drupal starts to become mainstreamly talked about because what will happen is the future of Drupal probably happens in IRC and at dinner and at lunch and in some crazy blog and then people talk about these same crazy ideas over and over eventually they start to form a little bit and then they come and they're like okay I'm going to present this it's going to be recorded and it's going to be public and we're going to figure out what to do about it. Nice okay you and I had a long conversation recently at SymphonyCon in Warsaw, Poland, which I really enjoyed. And I recorded, <clears throat> thanks to technical difficulties, um, I recorded a great piece of it, um, though I'm still a little bit sad about a couple of the things that we mm. lost, thanks to um, battery problem. In any case, if you've got your slides ready, I would be really excited to see and hear you do your session about giving good patch reviews, writing better patches, and all of that good stuff. Are you about ready? Here it is. Oy, patch reviews. OK, so I'm going to mute my mic and sort of fade off into the background for a while. Sure. So yeah, so this was, uh, this was a core conversation. And uh, I fleshed it out a little bit more and updated the information, the screenshots for how um, Drupal.org is working now. And this was originally uh, based upon some uh, information from XJM. And Zendoodles and I also did this presentation together. So it wouldn't be what it is without them. Uh, I'm YesCT on Drupal.org and Twitter. And I work for Cheppers, a Drupal shop in Hungary, and also for the community in general through GitTip. We do a lot of different things. Um, but what is starting to come 
very much aware right now is that we need more people doing reviews. We have more contributors to CORE than we've ever had, and that's super. Um, and we want people to get more comfortable with doing reviews. Uh, so the reason why reviews are so important to the Drupal project is because we can't go anywhere without this uh, repetitive loop that we have. So first, uh, we have somebody report a bug, and, uh, and they'll work on it, and then it'll get reviewed. And then it'll probably needs work, and it'll get reviewed, and it'll needs work, and then it'll get reviewed. So the thing to notice um, is if they don't get reviews, then the work sits there, and it can't go anywhere. And this is very frustrating for the person who worked on it. And it's also very inefficient because that work gets old and out of sync with the current code base. And then it can't even be renewed, reviewed until it's uh, re-rolled so it applies again, and then we can look at it. And there are some things that we can give general feedback on. But letting uh, work get old in the issue queue is really bad for morale and very inefficient. People who want to help, but they feel um, like the responsibility is too much if they were to say that something is good and then it would get into Drupal can rest assured because the Final step is after it's reviewed and somebody from the community says it looks good, they mark it reviewed and tested by the community. It still gets another review after that by a core committer. So it's absolutely okay for people to um, give their opinion on things. It's a big problem. Uh, we have a ton of issues. And 19% are of them are waiting for review. Um, that's 1,400. So we definitely need people to jump in and start um, practicing their review skills. So we're going to talk about uh, two things. One is how to get people to review your work. And then the other one is actually how to do the review. And the nice thing about talking about how to get people to review your work too, uh, to review your work first, is that it also is relevant to people who want to do reviews because it kind of explains how you find a review to do. So both how to find and how to get people to review your work are very similar. So we're going to start with that. And the first thing is a patch producer can be very specific when they upload their patch and they can add a comment to the issue specifying what kind of review they need. So they could say something like, this patch is just to demonstrate a general approach. It's not ready for a code review. Uh, or they could say something different. They could say, try it manually and see if it works. Uh, maybe they don't want any of that, and they want feedback on the architecture. So no matter what it is, it helps if the person who posts the patch says what kind of review they're looking for. Not only can they say this in a comment, but they can also use tags. We use tags a lot in the Drupal issue queue. And there are some specific review ones. Uh, not only does this help clarify what kind of review uh, they want, but it also helps people find that. When they have a particular skill set uh, and they want to do reviews, this helps them zero in on issues that need their skills. So patch producers can also, in general, just update the issue summary. If you post a patch and you say what kind of review you want and you add a needs tag, that's good. And then somebody's going to come and find your issue. And then they're going to read the issue summary to try and get an idea of what the problem is. And they're going to be totally confused. They're not going to know what to do. And then they're going to leave. And you don't want them to leave. You want them to do the review. So it helps to keep the issue summary up to date. Uh, in addition, one thing you can do specifically there is to make a steps to reproduce section that's an ordered list of steps that starts, starts with install Drupal uh, and then takes people right from there to be able to reproduce the bug. Any kind of uh, Unix commands or tricks uh, or tests to run to be able to see it 
uh, any of that detail is really helpful to put in there. The other thing we could do in the issue summary is to make a remaining tasks section, which lists out all the different things that need to be done. And that gives context um, for people to understand where the review fits into the lifetime of the issue. It's also nice to put a remaining tasks in because sometimes issues are in more than one state at a time. Sometimes they need both review and needs work. And so we need to be able to have a little bit more finesse when we communicate about what needs to be done. So we can do that with a remaining tasks section in the issue summary. As part of that, it helps also to link to contributor task documents. So for example, if you need a review, you could link to the contributor task document for how to do a review. Now that may seem kind of silly, but what it does is it gives you a greater audience of people who are going to be able to review your issue or at least take a stab at it. And they're gonna do a better job because they have a resource which is gonna give them hints about all the different things they should do when they do the review. It's also gonna give them confidence because now instead of just being like, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna try it, they're gonna be like, oh, here, it needs a review. There's some instructions. I can do this. In the future, it might be that you can just mark something needs review or needs reroll, and all those contributor task documents that we have will be automatically linked, so we won't have to cut and paste as much. And if you're interested in that, uh, you can check out issue 20132222. You can also add your own. Uh, con contributor tasks. There's a whole bunch of them, not just on reviews. Another way that patch producers can get more reviews on their work um, is if they are working on something that's very similar to other issues, or if you're doing a big conversion and you have subtasks and the subtasks are almost the same, is to make a meta issue, uh, link the subtasks back to that meta, but put the instructions for how to work on that issue and how to review it into the meta. And so a hints for reviewers, which has very specific things that people need to look for that has to do with those sub issues of that meta is great. So this would be above and beyond any of the general uh, review instructions that might be in our contributor task document. These would be things very specific about what you're doing. So if you're looking at a theme conversion or a schema or um, a, a migrate or something like that, they have very specific instructions. Put those in the meta and uh, you'll get people doing a much better job reviewing your work. Something else to keep in mind is if you need somebody to test something, um, but the people that you want to test may not have a local development environment, is you can uh, put a link in the issue summary, uh, which will give them the ability to spin up Drupal 8, or actually Drupal 7, or lots of other projects, um, with the patch applied. So this is really awesome because people can be um, on the train using their iPad and test your patch. Uh, or it may, may have special equipment. Um, maybe you need screen readers to test your patch. A link that just takes them to an instance of a Drupal site with a patch applied is, makes it a lot easier for them, and you'll get a lot more reviewers. Another way to get more people reviewing your patches are to give reviews. You can trade reviews with somebody else, uh, but the more reviews that we do and the more we kind of expose our process as we do our review, the more people will see them happening in the issue queue because a ton of people will follow issues, but they'll be afraid to work on them. If, we, if they see the good kind of reviews that we want more often, 
uh, then when they do do a review, they'll have that habit, the good habits that we want them to have. All right, so those are for patch producers, some things they can do. And then we've got the reviewers, our potential reviewers. And just like working on an issue, reviewing an issue, it's hard for people to get started. It's hard for them to find issues to work on. So what kind of issues does a new reviewer want to look for? You want to look for something simple so that you can have a successful first experience doing a review. And to help you out with that, you can look at novice issues. Uh, there's a novice tag in the issue queue. And there's also a novice uh, factoid in IRC. Initiatives are a good place to have a good experience uh, because you'll be working with other people and they can help point you to issues they're familiar with that might be a good match to you. Uh, you can look at metas. The nice thing about reviewing an issue that's a sub-issue of a meta is once you figure out what the problem is and you do one review, now there's a whole bunch of other issues waiting for your review and you don't have to figure out all of Drupal in order to do a second and third review because you figured out this one little area already. And then uh, another way of finding issues to work on is to look at uh, focus boards. So the novice link is easy to get to in your Drupal.org account uh, on your dashboard. There's a link to novice issues. And you can pick uh, Drupal core. And then you can pick a uh, needs review. And that'll get you a bunch of issues. You might not want to work on issues that uh, have comments in the last like 10 minutes or so. You might want to go for something that's a few days old uh, because the most recent ones are, might be being worked on quite vigorously. Uh, and you probably want to stay away from ones that are years old. Um, they can be hard for somebody just getting started to figure out the current state of. Uh, so you can look for things that are needs review, maybe uh, Drupal 8 and the novice tag. And then if you want, you can zoom down even further to reduce the wide choices. And you can add things like uh, initiative tags or area tags like uh, JavaScript or accessibility um, or performance. And, uh, and look for issues. So we have two different kinds of initiatives in core. Uh, there's the official ones, and you can see those at node 217085. Uh, and then we also have community initiatives that are listed on the community-initiatives slash Drupal-core. Now, um, once you go to one of those pages, what you'll see are people. Uh, and then once you click on their uh, usernames, you can look at posts, and you can see issues they've been working on. Or they might list some issues that are high priorities on their initiative page. So either through the initiative or through people who work on the initiative, if you kind of just look around at any of the issues they've been working on, you'll get a good idea for what kind of topical tags they have. And that can help you find issues that are of interest of you to you also. Uh, some initiatives have uh, focus sites. So this is the multilingual uh, hub. And we have a bunch of different ways of displaying issues and helping people find things that are of interest to them. And our focus board are the things that we're sprinting on right now that are currently important and probably up to date. Uh, there are more focus boards than just that, though. Uh, in IRC, you can ask the bot focus, and it'll give you a list. And you can also ask it metas. And uh, there's a list of metas that might be good jumping off points. Uh, this is the entity field API focus board. And the focus boards are nice because they automatically stay up to date uh, based upon the tags that people add and remove from the issues. So we don't have to manually update uh, summaries about what we're working on every month. 
So once you pick an issue, how are we going to do it? So the imp important thing is to think about reviews as an opportunity for both the reviewer and the patch producer to get better. And so we want to be nice. It might be their first patch. Uh, and you can tell. You can look at their user account and see how many posts they have or how many core commit mentions. Um, and we want to be really supportive so that they keep working. We can do that by being specific in our feedback. So instead of this is all wrong, we can say, we can ask questions um, and say, I'm confused about this, or this part looks like it might do this. Uh, the more specific, the better. And we can include links to either uh, standards docs or policy docs, um, other similar issues that already have been committed to core that have done things in a certain way. And that is really helpful for the person's work uh, we're reviewing because, one, they know where to find the answer, and they don't have to come and ask you. And two, they know that it's not just your opinion, but it's community consensus on the way things are done. And we want to provide this feedback in a really supportive way. Sometimes when uh, we do reviews, we don't have to say this is good or this is bad. What we could do is start a discussion and ask questions about the implementation. So to look at the code, I like to use Dreaditor uh, if the patch is small enough to use Dreaditor. Uh, and if it's been a while since you've done reviews, you'll notice a change. Dreaditor is on GitHub, uh, and you can install it, but you have to remove it from your browser if it's old, and then you go to dreaditor.org and they have a nice uh, install button that works great. When you find an issue to review, follow it, uh, because it can take a while to find an issue, and by the time you get started and wanting to do your review, you might be interrupted or have to go to a meeting or go do something around the house, uh, and you don't want to lose that issue. Issues are very easy to lose. So the follow is good. You want to look for issues that have a very good uh, issue summary that describe the problem, and you can follow what the desired outcome is. Ones that have uh, steps to review or hints for reviewers are really nice. Now, when you get to go um, actually try out uh, the patch, um, you might want to try it out uh, by actually uh, patching Drupal and then clicking around and doing some things. You can use Simply Test Me for that. It makes an instance in the cloud. I will give a hint that there's a register link all the way at the bottom of their front page. And if you do that, then your instance in the cloud lasts for two and a half hours instead of 30 minutes. So <laughs> reviews can take longer than 30 minutes. So I'd recommend people log in. When you want to use it to try out Drupal, uh, you just type Drupal slowly in the autocomplete and pick the first one there, Drupal Core. And then for Drupal 8, for the version, you have to go all the way to the bottom and pick 8.x. Uh, the reason we want to use 8.x is that's the head of Drupal 8. Uh, so we have some um, alpha releases right now and some versions that are tarred up and packaged on Drupal.org. Um, but on Drupal.org, and this is where Simply Test Me gets their 8.x, uh, under the version control uh, is a git clone command. So if you're going to try out a patch or try out Drupal, you want to try it out uh, right from head, right from that, um, the very latest stuff from Git, uh, and do a Git pull to make sure you have the latest things. Uh, because alpha could have been from a week ago, and bugs may have fi been fixed since then, or new bugs could have cropped up. That's why we want to make sure we get eight here. Uh, another thing that can be handy once you get um, Drupal 8 running and the patch installed while you're testing is to record some screenshots of what you see. And I use Jing to do that. 
and that's a pretty cool screen capture tool. But you can use your favorite. All right, so you have the issue that you want to review, and uh, you can get Drupal 8 running. So now you have to figure out which patch on the issue to test, and you want to test the most recent one. Uh, so we have a summary of files attached on an issue up at the top in the issue summary. And so the usually the first one there will be the one that you should review. When you review it, we want to be able to evaluate whether or not it fixes the actual issue, but that's not enough. It can't fix more than that. It needs to stay within the scope of the current uh, issue that we're working on, and it has to make things not worse. Uh, once you find the right patch, uh, Simply Test Me will apply it for you, or you can download the patch. Um, I usually right click and copy the link address of the patch, and then uh, I curl it down. And you can use curl or wget. So what I do is I have git locally. I do a pull to make sure I have the most up-to-date things, and I check on our branch. And then once I get my patch, then I apply it. And I like to apply it with a minus minus index, which stages all those changes and then I commit it right away. So now what I have is I have the latest Drupal 8 with the patch applied and it committed. That means that while I'm reviewing, if I happen to notice any little things that are wrong or big things that are wrong, I can go ahead and fix them. And then when I do a git diff, that's just my changes. And I know what my changes were versus what came before me in the patch. And that makes it really easy to do an inner diff. So once you look at the code, run tests, try it out manually, and you have some opinions you want to share back, so you're ready to put your results of your review there, usually you'll want to edit the issue. There is a comment uh, field right at the bottom of the issue, but a lot of times we need to change more than just write a comment. We need to change something about the metadata, the status, the tags, maybe update the issue summary, uh, and give our review and if we want to attach any files, we have to edit it anyway. So once you're editing it uh, in the comment where you're reporting your review, you want to say how you did your review. So for example, if you only looked at the code in the patch, say that. If you uh, applied the patch and ran tests locally, uh, you can say that. If you um, went through some steps to try something out in the UI, configuring a new block, you know, say exactly how you went through uh, doing your review. This will help you later when somebody improves the patch and then you want to come back next time and do your review again, you'll remember what you did. But it also helps the next person who comes upon this issue. Maybe you get busy and you get distracted with other things, but if you've written down uh, some decent steps that you went through, other people will more easily be able to pick up where you left off. Uh, so you want to say how you did your review, and then you also want to say uh, whether or not you thought it worked. Now, if anything in the patch affected the UI, then we need to include before and after screenshots. So you can write in your comment your opinion, and then what you'll want to do is scroll way down to where there you can uh, upload recent files. You can add your file there. And then once you upload that file, you can uh, right click and copy the link address and then use that address of the file you just uploaded back in your comment in an image tag. So I know people new to the issue queue or reviewing, they're hesitant to post big um, screenshots into issues and make a lot of noise, but it's really preferable if you embed things either right in your comment or right in the issue summary. Uh, it makes it so much more likely that the humans that come next will actually see what's in the screenshot. Because I don't know why, we just, when we have to do extra clicks, we just don't. So it's much better to embed. So you write down how you did your review and whether or not it worked and some 
before and after screenshots if it changed anything in the UI. And then now I want to really think about it. Did the code make sense at all? Uh, did the comments help? Uh, were they just saying nothing? Um, do you have some ideas for how to improve them? Were they missing? Uh, and think about the approach and say, is there a better way to do this? Maybe read back through some comments on the issue uh, about previous approaches that were made. And then you can ask questions about the approach. So when I look at the code, um, if I can, I look at it first in Dreaditor. And Dreaditor um, gives me a nice visual and a quick overview. One of the things I'll look at is which files were changed. And those are in these little diff headers. I'll also look at the diff stat. Uh, and that tells me how many files were changed, how many insertions, and how many deletions. This is particularly useful if I'm looking at a reroll that's uh, that's being made because a reroll is when a solution used to work with Drupal, whatever code base in the past, and then the code base changed a little bit and the patch doesn't apply anymore. And so when somebody's doing a reroll, they're not implementing a great new idea about how to solve the problem. They're trying to recreate exactly the same solution, just that it applies to Drupal 8. And so when you're looking at a diff stat, you want to check that the uh, that it's very similar. So if the previous one had six files and the one you're looking at only has two, then you know something probably went wrong with the reroll. Uh, now, a lot of times, somebody who's doing a reroll, they'll notice things to improve about the patch. And the trick there is to do the reroll independently. Go ahead and make the reroll exactly with what was implemented before, post that patch, and then after you do that, make a second patch and an inner diff that shows your improvements. And that makes it a lot easier to review that. And um, that will help a lot. All right, so now we're writing up our review. We said what kind of review we did. And we want to include uh, whether or not we thought it, was, uh, it worked, any questions that we had, what we thought about the approach when we're trying to give feedback on the code itself and we want to talk about hunks of it or any um, any remarks that we want to make it helps a lot if we break them up into sections and then we put them in an ordered list because then when somebody who's been working on it wants to reply to our comments it's really easy they can say well your point number three you know i think this about that your point number four i think that uh, so a little HTML in the review is really nice. If you're going to suggest something be changed, this is where we can put those links to other resources, uh, like standards documents or other example issues that have been done. So the problem here is that we have so many issues to review. We have a lot of contributors, but we need to get everybody doing better at reviews. And so when we write down in our review how we did it and what we did, that will really help us scale. A lot of times when you do a review after you're done with the review, you'll update the issue summary and update the tags. So you can see we do that a lot, right? Both the people who write the patch and ask for reviews and also the reviewers. All right, so the other thing about reviews is the first time you look at a patch is the only first time you're going to have to look at it. Uh, so you might think about how you want to approach that. Uh, everybody will get their own tricks. When we look at reviews, uh, when we do a review and we're looking at something, we're going to see a lot of things. We could potentially see a lot of things wrong, but they're not always important things that need to be fixed. So when we're giving a critique, we don't want to end up with a patch that's perfect. And I know at first that sounds weird. You'd be like, well, why don't we want to commit things to core or to a project if they're not perfect. And that's because you'll never get them perfect. 
So we need some way of deciding like what's important enough to make something needs work and what's okay to let slide and mark it RTBC. And the way that we know that is to look at the core gates. So drupal.org slash core dash gates uh, list these areas, uh, documentation, performance, accessibility, usability, and testing. And under each of those, it tells us uh, when we need to mark something needs work and when we don't. Uh, so for example, under the documentation, there's a link that tells you the minimum requirements. And it will say things like um, method signatures need to have uh, a doc block and every parameter needs to be documented with a type uh, and the return needs to be documented with a type. So that's, if you look at a patch and it doesn't have those things, that's something that needs work. Uh, but if you look at something and uh, they're using, um, let's see, a, the English British way of spelling the word color and our standards say, well, really, you should use the American spelling for color. You know, that's not a needs work issue because it's not on the minimum requirements uh, for the core gates. So that's how we know whether or not when something's wrong, if we need to mention it and if we need to mark it needs work. For the um, Yeah, so the, the gates are that the issue summary is up to date. Uh, and our doc standards are in node 1354. They're super fun to read. Um, we also say that uh, all modules need a, a hook help and that an issue isn't done. It's not closed until it has a change record. So. We get a patch and it goes through the needs work, needs review cycle. Somebody marks it RTBC. The committer comes along, moves it back to needs work. We work on it again, it gets RTBC'd and then the committer fixes it. They commit it into core. They don't close the issue. What they do is they send it back to active because the issue can't be made fixed until a change record is written. And those are super ways to get involved if, uh, if you wanna write some change records. Uh, the performance core gates are essentially don't assume or guess, hey, I think this will be slower or faster. You've got to profile it. For accessibility, accessibility problems are bugs. Um, and we want things to be keyboard usable. This is my computer. Where are you? It's up there. Okay, go on. Um, so for usability, any changes in the UI need a usability review and we need before and after screenshots. For testing, we want to check for coverage, um, ask for new tests if uh, we have a new bug. And we also want to verify that if we have a patch that's tests only, that it fails. One of the things that you'll notice in the Drupal community is that we're all real people. <laughs> <laughs> and we have children that are trying so hard to do their, to be good. Kathy is not only but, a but patch But we can't because mom will let us have another computer. Okay. It might run out of battery. Here, take it. Go. See, it doesn't work without the cord. All right. So um, people who do reviews absolutely love it when patch producers make inner diffs. Um, and so you can read about inner diffs uh, under documentation slash git slash inner diff. Because, you know, the issues, they get old, and we need to work on them. And then you get feedback, and their needs work, and you are just addressing that one little bit of feedback. And you know you need reviewers, and reviewers are hard to find. 
So you want to make it easy for that reviewer to come back and say, all right, did you address that one little bit that I had? So that's where the inner diffs come into play. Okay, the other thing to do, if you're still hanging in there when you're doing your review, if you're not, you can just say this is as far as I got and just post your comment, is to look at the issue history and see if there were any uh, concerns that were brought up before and whether or not they've also been addressed. Because you're not just looking uh, to find new concerns, but you want to know if anything was, it's fine, if you want, you want to know if anything was wrong before, if it's been fixed. All right, so we read it once to see if it's fixed. We read it again to see if it's within scope and not fixing too much. And then we read it again to see whether or not the fix is the best approach. A handy thing to have, but you don't need, is an IDE. IDEs can tell you automatically if things are wrong, so you can apply a patch and look at it in context, and it'll um, you can inspect the code and it'll give you all kinds of hints, and then you can um, you can sound all smart when you say, you know, I noticed this uh, unused variable, uh, or this method is a uh, deprecated, we should be using this other thing instead. And you can link to the change record. It's all very cool. So there, we have resources to get people started. There's a lot of great uh, videos on Drupalize Me. And they have a whole community tools section that you can find there. Uh, the ladder is also really good, and that takes you step by step how to do things in the issue queue. For reviews specifically, uh, the contributor task document for Don't review change. is really good. Don't change your mouse. Right, right, right. Computer. I know. Hey, I know. I found out that it happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so what can you do? What are the action steps now? So you're all psyched, you see how much we need reviewers, and uh, you know that we're going to help you get better at reviewing, and what kind of awesome effect it's going to have per getting the project to move forward. So your action steps, you could do any one of these or multiple of them. Come to the core mentoring office hours. Uh, they're twice a week. And there are experienced people uh, there, and we want to help you get more involved. You can also ask any time in Drupal-Contribute. You can say, hey, I wanted to review something. I'm a little nervous. Does anybody have an idea of something that might be a good starter review? And we can point you in the right direction. You can also look for an event that's near you coming up. And uh, DrupalCall.com is a good way of seeing those things uh, around the globe, you can find things that are nearby you. So for example, um, I know in March, I'm going to be going to Seged uh, in Hungary for Dev Days, and that's going to be completely awesome. And that's it. Those are some steps and some tricks and some tools. Hooray! I found my <laughs> mute button, and we got through this. <laughs> hey, this is, I really, um, so just to be clear, uh, you've gone through this a lot and you've seen the mistakes and you've seen the problems people have getting their heads around it. And I love this kind of report from the trenches and the things the the little things that you don't necessarily have to do, but that make it better. Um, plus, you know, Git is still a little bit scary for some of us and inner diffs, um, you know, wow. So. Uh, thanks that it's, um, now that I've seen this again, it's actually, it's actually pretty clear and it's, it's, um, you know, definitely a great idea. So thank you for all of your time and doing this. Any last words for our brave audience, Kathy? I would say experienced contributors are really patient with people getting involved. And we all understand how important reviews are. So don't hold back. All right. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And um, sounds like you have something else to go and take care of now.